Hello and good morning, everyone. My name is Maria Christina Miem. I'm the Lightcon Project Director at Deutsche Messe. And I would like to welcome you to the final day of our Lightcon Preview Week. Today, with Mr. Liebers and Mr. Uppets from the German Aerospace Center, DLR, we are happy to have them and we're looking forward to the lecture. As you might know, within this week, we would have celebrated the premiere of our new Congress Trade Fair Lightcon. Uh, the first uh, cross-material and cross-technology platform for lightweight solutions for all user industries. Unfortunately, due to the corona crisis, we had to postpone the premiere. So with this preview week, we wanted to shorten the time a little until next year and also offer you a, a little sneak peek, a, a small foretaste of what Lightcon 2021 will be all about with high quality lectures, uh, interesting showcases in the exhibition, and not to forget a thrilling evening event here in sunny Hanover. So uh, I hope that we could raise your interest with our webinar series and that we will meet in person next year here in Hanover. That will be great. So save the date, 23rd and 24th June, 2021. And uh, if you want to stay informed about Lightcom and maybe uh, future webinars as well, just go to our website and uh, subscribe to our newsletter. Or if you have any question, don't hesitate to get in touch with us in person. We are looking forward to it. Um, so for today, I hope that you will gain some interesting insights. Enjoy the webinar. Thank you all for being with us and uh, to the speakers, of course. And last but not least, I would also like to thank our founding partner for the great support in organizing this event. Thank you. Um, so before we start, I would like to hand over to our host, Bastian Brenken from Composites United for some final organizational remarks. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good to have you as, as well for the, la for the last day of the Lightcon. It was an exciting week and we still have another very cool talk ahead of us today, I think. Before we start and before I hand over the, the word uh, to the gentlemen, Dr. Liebers and Mr. Opitz, um, I will just briefly tell you how the structure of this lecture is. Um, it's, it's going to take about an hour. The webinar in the first 30 minutes uh, will be a lecture. And during that time, we ask you to keep your microphone and your camera turned off to not disturb the speakers. And after that, we have a Q&A session where you can ask your question. And for that, we will use the raise your hand functionality in Zoom, but I will explain this when we get there. Today's talk is about uh, sensors information flow architecture and analysis. And it's, it's, it's tackling the topic of uh, smart factory. And uh, the gentleman from the German Aerospace Center will present a very, very interesting and I think successful project they've done. And uh, with some cool technology that was developed. So I think for many of you, this is very relevant content. With that, uh, I'd like to hand over um, the word uh, to Dr. Liebers and Mr. Opus. And ladies and gentlemen, enjoy today's webinar. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the nice introduction uh, and giving us uh, the opportunity to present our work on the Lightcon Preview Week. Uh, my name is Nico Liebers and I welcome you to our presentation on the way forward to a smart composite production. Uh, well, what is that actually a smart production? Why is everybody talking all the time about digitalization and why do we want to collect so much data? But I hope uh, after our presentation, you have a better, much better idea what smart production means and what are the benefits. And we have a vision that we can use the data that we collect during production to reduce all the steps needed normally between the part when, when it comes out of the mold and getting it into the aircraft. The vision is to do as much quality assurance as possible already during the production and knowing exactly the properties of the product. We also want to use the data to optimize the processes, reduce scrap parts, and develop completely new process technologies. Uh, my colleague, uh, Mark Opitz, will now show you how we, get, we started the road uh, to smart pro uh, composite production. And Mark, I, give, I hand you over uh, the presentation. The, the stage is yours. 
Yeah, thank you, Nico, for the introduction and also from my side, uh, hello to everyone. Um, as you can see behind me, the plan was uh, for today to take you into our laboratory. Um, due to home office during Corona, I have to choose the Zoom function instead to give you this uh, experience um, we are talking today. Um, all right, back to the topic. All of you know the potential of lightweight construction, especially of fiber composites. They can be found wherever maximum part performance and low weight are required. Therefore, carbon fiber reinforced plastics in particular will play a major role in the material mix of lightweight construction for tomorrow's um, mobility. The ah, okay. Um, the production process process you can see here starts on the left with the raw material, fiber and resin as input, and on the right as an output of the process, you get the finished part. Whereas the material and the final shape of the part is created during the molding process. And this very important step of infusion and consolidation takes place in a closed mold inside of a press, which means there is no feedback at all. At best, um, parameters of the machinery or process boundary conditions are known. For instance, the mold temperature the um, injection pressure or the clamping force, force. So the production is mainly based on experience, whereas if we know what's going on inside, we can act accordingly. So what we had at the beginning of our work and almost everybody who is working in this field uh, was a black box, as you can see on the screen. To explain this in more detail, I've brought you an example. As I explained before, we have at least two materials at the beginning. And here you can see the impregnation process of the fiber with the resin through a glass plate. In this uh, ideal case, the component is filled evenly and completely from the left to the right. And uh, you can see a straight flow front, which is formed, and the component is impregnated um, perfectly with the resin. In reality, the materials have a uh, fluctuation, which can affect the process and the component quality. So here on the right, um, you can see this uh, reality. In contrast to the ideal status, the flow fronts tend to form because there is a small gap around the component. And uh, this, this uh, edge around the component, um, uh, on this edge around the component, the resin flows uh, much faster than between the fibers. And this is also called uh, the race tracking. Also, defects in the fiber material itself represent such channels. The result of such a complex flow front um, can be the inclusion of dry areas. Uh, and under circumstances, these dry areas can remain in the, compon in the component and finally lead to scrap. A proper probe a proper process management can prevent these inclusions or lead to their dissolution. In the end, uh, reducing crap is possible. The intelligent mode of the future we are talking today about, in short IFITS, is a project founded by the German government and was uh, our approach to find a solution for all the things happen in this black box. 
we started with the idea to make the process step smart uh, in terms of transparency to generate uh, to generate um, added value. So in our case, um, you can see the black box here on the right. In our case, the black box is an existing mode of the previous project Colibri and represents a closed mode scenario for the resin transfer molding pr process of an Z frame. And hundreds of these uh, Z frames, um, I have one here, uh, and hundreds of these uh, frames um, are part of the fuselage um, to reinforce it in a circumferential direction. So the goal within IFETS was to provide technologies for improved manufacturing processes, which mean on one hand, determine current status of the part and process by integration of sensor systems into the mold. And on the other hand, the central uh, acquisition of them sensor systems and machines as well as, well as the preparation, processing, and visualization of these uh, expert systems in real time. A group of eight companies you can see down there um, from the fields of aerospace supplier, composite production, electrical and IT engineering, as well as measurement te technology were involved. Well, to connect the real world with the virtual one, you need a sensor. So our first question was, which type of sensor system or sensor is relevant and should be integrated? And for this purpose, we have conducted a survey in industrial companies and science and asked about critical component properties in the field of aviation and carbon fiber reinforced plastics. The feedback was a list of more than six, more than 50 uh, different features. And after grouping, we had a list of six uh, relevant parameters you can see uh, here. And together with the project partners, possible sensor systems were selected or developed uh, in our project to identify these parameters. So, before the final implementation, the selected sensor systems um, and the sensor technology were integrated into the existing mold um, using a digital mock-up. Um, and with, with this ability of, uh, uh, to visualize in 3D, the optimal sensor position and cable routing was found and uh, also interaction uh, between every sensor um, was excluded. And um, also the basic function of the tool, the existing basic function of the tool, um, the heating and the sealing uh, were ensured. Uh, in, and in addition, uh, the basis for the subsequent milling work um, on the forming tool was laid. As a result, uh, together with the project partners, we were able to refit um, the existing tool, the existing mode, with the sensor technology. A total of seven different sensor systems were implemented based on the evaluated criteria quality criteria um, and the total number of sensors in the tool was around about 80. So this is a high number and should, um, yeah, but should not uh, discourage you at this point. We simply wanted to test whether sensor, sensor system influence each other and what a resolution as well as bandwidth we actually needed. Uh, so in reality, and for the documentation of the production process and the component quality 
uh, significantly fewer sensors are required according to the principle, start small, think big. And down here on the bottom, you can see the back of the tool with the um, ultrasonic sensors, the thermocouples and the cable routing. So this is a back of the future. Um, so start small, think big. Uh, with this statement, I uh, would like to return to my colleague, um, Nico Liebers, and we'll give him back the mouse. Yeah, thank you, Mark. So uh, as Mark explained to you, uh, we had several project partners uh, that each developed and integrated seven, well, uh, in some seven different sensor types into the existing mode. And uh, each of the previously identified quality criterion uh, represents a separate scientific field or field of expertise uh, for each of these uh, sensor systems. So uh, for this reason, it was essential to stick to a modular design and uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, no isolated solutions should have been created. So besides solving unsolved problems, a main go goal of our work, especially for us as a research facility, is the transfer of knowledge. Uh, so the barriers between uh, knowledge providers and their field of expertise and the knowledge takers should be reduced to a minimum. If possible, uh, the knowledge takers uh, should be able to operate the, the sensor system without in-depth uh, expert knowledge. And therefore, uh, we need uh, a, the digital infrastructure, or in other words, Internet of Things and sensor technology as a tool to build bridges between the parties involved. So at the beginning of the project, uh, most of our sensor systems had been in a stage that we would like, we, that we call a pseudo digitalization. So our data could have been passed paperless, but however, a USB stick or an email have been involved and it would still have been, uh, it was still uh, required to do things like importing the data and reformatting and also re uh, synchronize the data. So uh, based on, on the existing infrastructure we have here, uh, the cornerstones for a real digitalization were established. Uh, the systems and the machines must be able to communicate with, with each other. And we wanted to integrate people into this flow of information uh, using the suitable and, uh, and available instruments. Uh, however, uh, digitalization should not give rise to a monopoly of interpretation. So neither the machines or the humans should have an exclusive right of, on the data. Nevertheless, for us, the true digitization uh, can be described by the flow of data. Not the human being is the end user, but another computer program. So the discussions how to do this, uh, Slowly, uh, how to uh, manage this data flow quickly led to discussions about the necessary architecture. How do we get rid of these media breaks of the USB sticks and emails? And how, what does the, the workflow for knowledge providers and knowledge takers would look like? Would look, look like? As a result of these discussions, we have created an encapsulated machine network uh, in which we can provide uh, the needed software and data company-wide. Uh, that means that uh, we can operate multiple servers on which all mission critical services can run uh, fail safe through virtualization with so-called containers. For us, the de development of each service includes an so-called application programming interface, API, which you might have heard uh, uh, here and there, uh, so with detailed documentation of the interface functions. And APIs are a standardized network uh, interface, network-based interface, 
which almost every programming language can use or provide. So this is very inclusive to, um, so that uh, everybody can stay in its uh, preferred uh, programming language. The goal of these interfaces uh, is to build bridges of former isolated fields of expertise, as we showed before. Uh, and because the solutions should not remain lonely islands, we want to automatically collect and link relevant information and make them available to all knowledge takers. So just a quick reminder what uh, Mark uh, just told you. So our goal is to, defect, uh, to detect uh, 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 occurring de uh, defects already during production. So we uh, showed you the example of uh, ideal versus uh, complex flow fronts. So we want to detect what is happening in our black box, the mold. Uh, so we have, do we have a, an ideal or such a complex flow front and, or something completely else? And what does that mean if you have, uh, for example, this, uh, this complex flow front on the right? Will there be defects in our mold, in our component or not? And, or even, will we even have a scrap part? So in, in order to uh, avoid such defects, we use sensors for quality monitoring. And one example for this is uh, an ultrasonic based process monitoring which uh, is in development of our institute and is one of the former isolated solutions for experts. The sensors, as you see on the top left, uh, are attached outside of the mold. And from there, they send uh, sound signals into the component and uh, the sound signals are reflected back and receive, and the sensors receive then the response. Uh, the, the raw signals, uh, what you can see on the top right, then uh, need to be processed, for example, into an amplitude curve, and finally uh, into a, an information about the flow front, uh, what you can see on, in, the, in the animation on the, on the left, uh, bottom left. So, but in, in all of these steps, uh, expert knowledge isn't required, and for example, already uh, for the correct measurement of the, uh, of the raw signals, the same applies to all the, the next uh, steps uh, getting to the forefront information. So in the course of digitalization, these inputs should be automated as far as possible, or for example, uh, stored depending on, on the mode. Or user or users should be helped, for example, with uh, wizards in a dialogue in an user interface to get to the right settings. So uh, taking all these steps from before to getting from a raw signal to, uh, to the flow front information you want to have and turning them into individual services, uh, the architecture would, like, would look like, uh, would, uh, look like something like this here. Uh, the measurement uh, is controllable by an uh, interface uh, from the, which is running uh, on the measurement hardware itself. And uh, then the, in this, uh, the servers, uh, the services on the servers uh, will acquire uh, the raw signals from, from the measurement hardware and store them in databases and, and other services would then uh, analyze the data to finally get uh, the flow front information and so on. So the intelligence is not uh, on the measurement hardware itself. Uh, it is uh, uh, implemented in, in services on, on the servers. So human users now can, for example, uh, display uh, these measurements graphically in a dashboard you see on the right, uh, can set parameters and control the measurement and also can view uh, the analyzed data uh, with a given uh, analysis tools. And another possibility uh, in the middle on the uh, bottom is to access the, the services directly uh, by these uh, API interfaces. 
For example, when a research assistant uh, wants to process the, the data directly, he can get uh, access the data directly by these uh, APIs. And uh, not to, to just give you the, the gray theory, I want to show you now uh, uh, in, a, in a little live uh, demo uh, some of these dashboards. So I switch to my browser. So here you can see uh, the dashboard uh, to uh, to visualize the, the floor front data we uh, acquired during the, uh, our um, tests in the, uh, uh, during the project. So at the top, you have uh, some traffic lights showing if the, the resin has already arrived at, uh, at the sensor position. So this is the case for all uh, positions here. Then here in the, in the first diagram, you see uh, the the amplitude curve uh, of the sounds uh, of the sound signal. So if we if the flow front arrives, uh, the, this uh, this amplitude drops uh, drastically, and we cl uh, get a very clear uh, uh, signal change. And on the bottom, you have another vis visualization of the flow front detection. And if I go back now in time uh, of our uh, test. Before the flow front arrived, so we have still uh, the the full uh, ultrasound amplitude, and all the traffic lights are on red. And then when I get go back for, forward again in, in time, you see the first uh, uh, flow front uh, detection. Uh, well, the the flow front is detected, and then. I'll go back as I showed you before, then after the injection is completed, we see that uh, all, uh, all sensors show that the, the flow front has arrived. And uh, we have dashboards like these for all of the, these, uh, the sensor systems we, we uh, integrated. So like, for example, the, uh, for the temperature, we, we measured of the mode. So here we have, for example, the uh, the heating before the injection, and then uh, you have the injection pro, uh, step in, at a lower temperature, and after the injection, so after the ultrasound sensors would show, okay, the injection is complete, then we can uh, heat up to, uh, uh, to the cure temperature, and then when we detect if that the cure is completed, we can finally cure, uh, cool down the, the mold and uh, demold our, our component. Uh, another example I want to give you is uh, uh, the pressure sensor we had or in, uh, integrated in the mold, where you can uh, measure the, the vacuum pressure and then the resin pressure during, uh, during injection. And these were the, the dashboard examples uh, for the for humans in, in, in quotes. Uh, and, uh, and now I show you uh, the so-called API uh, to get, for example, the, the raw data of the ultrasonic measurements. So in the, in the, API, the API module we use with, uh, with, our, with Python, we, uh, it creates directly uh, a documentation page if you go uh, to the address of the service, and, and then uh, you you have listed all the uh, available um, methods this API has implemented. And for example, if you would uh, want to uh, directly uh, use the raw signals and analyze them yourselves, or you know, connect a service to this. Uh, to uh, to the raw signals, you could even you can even try this out in, in, in this documentation page. So if I uh, press on execute, I get the response of the raw signal, which is a very long list of, uh, of numbers. And uh, a machine would, uh, would call uh, this, this method like, the, like shown here.
Uh, in this way, uh, the former isolated solution of the ultrasonic uh, sensors, uh, which originates, originates from a PhD thesis and was previously re uh, reserved for only for experts, can now be made uh, available and usable by others. An important part of this is, the, is that the APIs uh, should always provide in documentation, just like I showed you before. Uh, as an example, the previously gained information at which point the, the flow front arrives can now be coupled with a flow front simulation, which you can see on the right. Uh, during the running injection, uh, the process of the parameters, uh, uh, the process parameters of the simulation are con constantly adapted to the current uh, flow front information it gets from the sensors. And the so former 1D information of the sensors is hence transformed into a 3D, three-dimensional flow diagram uh, reconstructed from this measurement data. And the current state can be evaluated as well as the prediction uh, of the further, as so what, uh, where the flow front would go after this. And we can ev evaluate these uh, results uh, if any defects will occur. And finally, uh, individual parameters or modified process steps can be derived from these results and evaluations of the simulation. And then we can try to mitigate the risk of defects. So to sum up uh, and give you a quick overview of the benefits. So we started at the beginning of the, the project. Uh, with an experience-based conventional process. And we had this black box and we had to use our uh, long year uh, experience to, to design the process. Uh, we now reached with all the sensor data and the coupled simulations uh, to a knowledge-based process. So founded on the fusion of sensor data and the analysis methods and simulations. So with that, we arrive at transparent and efficient processes uh, and redu with, by reducing, with reducing the process times. We lower the quality fluctuations and reduce the number of scrap parts. Uh, we preserve the knowledge and make it also usable for others, for non-experts. And we reduce the non-destructive inspection by shifting the quality assurance uh, into production. Uh, also, uh, another point is uh, the, the virtual certification of each individual component based on measured quality data. And uh, to give you a little outlook or uh, what is now possible with our uh, results, uh, with the uh, yeah, developed solutions uh, of the digitized injection and cure process of our project IFADs. We can transfer them now, now to, uh, for example, the three large research platforms we have in our site in Stade. For example, Evo, which you can see on the left. This is a complete and highly automated RTM chain uh, from textile cutting over preforming to injection and cure. And uh, the data from all machines and dedicated quality sensors are collected online and stored in, in decentralized databases. And another database on, on top keeps then track of all these relations of the, between the data and the production history the component has, uh, uh, has uh, passed. And the second, uh, Example is the research platform Balu, which is a large research autoclave with a, a big number of integrated sensor systems, just like uh, we showed you. Uh, the sensor data is then coupled also with a cure simulation and resulting in, in the virtual autoclave. And with the help of this virtual autoclave, uh, the cure process is constantly evaluated and corrected. Uh, so if we reach the uh, required cure, degree of cure, or uh, if uh, 
things like def deformation is, uh, are, uh, is evaluated. And the last uh, example is on the right, the platform, platform Crophy, which is a multi -cell, robot cell for automated fiber placement uh, with online and uh, offline process simulation and uh, which is used to optimize the process and dy dynamically distribute uh, the task between the robots. And uh, also a structural evaluation is performed uh, uh, constantly, uh, which is based on quality sensors. For example, if uh, defects are, uh, are detected during production, uh, so this is uh, used to reduce scrap and also to assure the, the required, required quality of the components. So and with that, uh, we come to our to the uh, to the end of our in, uh, presentation, and we want to invite you to uh, uh, get in touch with us if you want to uh, tackle this uh, road to uh, to digitalization and smart composite production with us. Uh, our systems are also mobile, uh, so we can take our, uh, we have a kind of uh, mobile cloud with uh, the, uh, the, service, uh, the services um, uh, implemented on our uh, servers and we could bring them to you. And uh, yeah, with that, I say thank you for, for your attention and I'm very happy to answer any questions. So thank you. Thank you.